So actually Rebecca was one of my inspirations when I was looking for a way to heal from chronic illness. So when I was in college, um, just finishing up my senior year of college, I came down with mono and I just didn't get better from there. I kind of developed chronic issues um, from that point. And at, at, when I was in college, I was very active. I was a rock climbing instructor and just kind of go, go, go. I was on a standard American diet and that seemed to work fine for me up until, you know, when it didn't, right? <laughs> Which is pretty much everyone's story. Um, but yeah, the, I had this infection and I just developed chronic issues after that. And so I was unable to exercise. I was getting dizzy. I was getting migraines. I was severely fatigued and it got to the point where I couldn't go to class. Um, and after a month or two of these lingering symptoms going on and getting worse, I started to think, okay, I guess I need to go see some doctors, see what's going on. And so we went down that route for years, the Western medicine route. And um, I was diagnosed with all sorts of conditions, um, dysautonomia or POTS, um, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is supposedly an incurable connective tissue disorder that's genetic, um, Chiari malformation, intracranial hypertension, which is um, when the pressure in your brain gets really high, um, and let's see, gastroparesis, which is something Rebecca went through as well. Um, I've gained, I've actually gained 50 pounds from my lowest weight. Um, but yeah, so I went down the Western medicine route. I actually had five brain and neurosurgeries um, and was recommended to have more, but a year after my uh, last neurosurgery, I, I just was so sick. I, I couldn't get out of bed. I was having episodes every day of, you know, non-epileptic seizures. I was having, um, you know, I couldn't like look at light and sound, like sounds could just be like crazy painful and um, just having the craziest symptoms that I, I really didn't even know was possible. And um, I, I really felt like I was dying every day. And I'm sure that's something that Rebecca can relate to. But I was like, I, I can't go through with having more of these surgeries that aren't helping me. And it, what's interesting about it is when I had those surgeries, the doctor would say, this is the worst case I've ever seen. You know, you're going to feel so much better. And it just it didn't happen. It wasn't helping me. And um, so then I started to look into more alternative routes of healing and I started with just like acupuncture and just started going a different way seeing a natural path but that still wasn't really what I needed and so I actually heard about the lion diet uh, from Michaela Peterson's story and I was becoming interested in that but I was nervous because I was so sick I was like I can't afford to get any worse than I already am and uh, so I did a lot of research on it from my bed um, and I watched a lot of, you know, Ken Berry's videos and eventually came across Rebecca's story. And at first I was, um, really nervous about doing the carnivore diet because I was so underweight and everybody was talking about weight loss. And so I was like, well, I can't, I can't lose any more weight. And so I was looking for stories like Rebecca's where people were able to gain weight and I kind of realized, okay, it looks like this is possible. And so I decided to go for it and I, I started the carnivore diet and um, within a couple of months I was able to start cooking my own food. So I wasn't able to do any of my own cooking um, before starting carnivore. So I would, I would bring a chair up to, the, up to the stove and I would cook my beef and, <laughs> and that was just an exciting thing for me. And just slowly I started to get more functionality back um, after going carnivore. And I, one of the biggest things was I didn't have those really severe fatigue crashes. So like when I was really sick, I, if I overdid it, then I could be, you know, in a dark room with no sound for three days from just the overstimulation of, you know, being, overdoing it. And um, so that was a really big progress when I started Carnivore was that I was able to um, 
go out and do some things, you know, go to family dinners and um, start to see some friends sometimes. And so that was really a huge blessing. And I, for a while I did, um, I went stricter, I did the lion diet and just did beef, salt and water sort of thing. And um, that ended up, you know, I still was making progress, but it ended up not being the, the right diet for me. And so I started adding in back in more things like, you know, eggs and some chicken and some pork and uh, that worked better for me. I felt better doing that than I did stricter. So I know something Rebecca often talks about, like stricter isn't always better. And, um, but I still was pretty sick. Like it, it was interesting because, you know, when you come from such a low point, you, you're like, oh, I'm doing amazing, but really I was doing still horribly. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, you know, I like to kind of compare it to a battery percentage where like, you know, I, I was essentially bed bound. So I was, you know, 1% needing to use a wheelchair to get around and stuff. And then, you know, you know, six to eight months of carnivore, I was maybe at like seven or eight percent, but that felt amazing for me at that time. And um, then I got into, I got interested in brainer training and nervous system regulation. And basically the idea with that is when your nervous system is stuck in fight or flight mode, which most people that have chronic illness do have that issue, then that's not conducive to healing, right? So you can't heal when your body is stuck in a chronic state of fight or flight. So you can be eating the perfect diet, you can be carnivore, you know, eating just perfectly right and not healing because you're stuck in a chronic state of nervous system dysregulation. And so I started doing a brain retraining program where I spent an hour every day visualizing myself healthy and joyful. And I, it changed my life. Like I went from, you know, not being able to walk to my mailbox to being able to walk a mile in just a couple of weeks, like you know, three to four weeks of doing this brain retraining. And so this that was a huge, huge part of the piece of the puzzle for me with my healing journey was, you know, the nervous system regulation side of things because, you know, I had I had a good diet. I was getting the right nourishment, but I don't think my body was digesting the nutrients right because I was stuck in fight or flight. And so when my nervous system started to calm down and I, I started to feel safe in my body again, because when you're so sick, like you just feel really unsafe in your body. And, and that's understandable because like, how could you not, right? And so just consistently like signaling safety to my brain through just doing things like spending time in nature or getting out to see the morning sunlight, you know, reducing blue light exposure, um, doing grounding, and doing these visualizations where I was imagining myself healthy and strong, um, I would just visualize, you know, just walking and feeling good over and over and over again, like bringing in all the five senses. And that, the idea with that is that your brain doesn't know the difference between visualization and reality. And so if you visualize it enough, then it will start to manifest into your life. Um, so I really, I really saw a new level of healing when I brought in the nervous system regulation side of things along with the diet. And it's interesting because in the nervous system regulation space, a lot of people are kind of like, well, Rachel, aren't you gonna, like, when are you gonna go back to eating normal food, you know? And I'm like, no, like what you eat wires your brain. And so that's a part of nervous system regulation too, is feeding your body the right nutrients. and. So I don't have any plans to go back to eating, you know, sugar and seed oils and processed foods. Like, I want to give my body the best possible chance to be healthy, and what we eat is our fuel, right? So it obviously matters a lot what we eat, especially because you know so many people are healing by just changing their diet alone. Mm -hmm. And so that that's something that you know is is very important to me is you know eating a nourishing diet and prioritizing animal-based foods because that's changed my life and um, so yeah that's that's just a little piece of my story and now it's been about almost two years since I started the carnivore diet and um, I'm doing really really well last week we went uh, hiking in the Grand Canyon and we went backpacking and I've started rock climbing again I started rock climbing again in December and um, yeah just I'm, I'm getting my life back and it's, it's such a blessing, so, yeah. Yes. I have a question for you. Yes. So, 
how old were you when this first started mm -hmm. and bring us to current? And who was your person that kept, I mean, just the, I'm imagining the medical records and yes. the folders that you had. Yeah. So my, so the first question was, uh, how old was I? When, yeah, when? Yeah, so I was 20, 20 or 21 when I first started getting sick. And so now I'm 27. It's been about seven years since I got sick. And um, so the last two has, has really been when I've, you know, been on the upward trajectory and, and healing. And during that time, so actually I got sick. I don't know if Jake is in here, but oh, there. <laughs> so I actually got sick not too long after we started dating and he just stayed by my side through the whole thing. And yes, yeah. And, and so my family was very supportive and he was very supportive and it was interesting because we kind of knew we wanted to get married not not too long after dating but i was like no like let's just wait until i get better so i can walk down the aisle yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um what was interesting was we ended up just just deciding to go for it and um get married about a year and a half later and uh, i ended up getting much worse after we got married and so it was like really amazing timing that we were able to have actually like a, a nice wedding and we took a lot of our wedding pictures sitting down and I like with the wedding uh, meet and greet line I was sitting down and, and stuff but it was still like we were still able to have a really amazing wedding and um, so yeah so he was very supportive the whole time and my, my parents were as well so yeah and uh, they they helped cook my meat for me in the beginning when I couldn't do it. And um, it was cool because I, I really didn't have that. I know a lot of people when they go keto or carnivore, they have that social challenge. But I didn't have that. Like, I, I didn't have any social anything going on. And so I, I didn't really have that challenge until much, much later. Mm -hmm. Um, in my carnivore journey, but actually, like my friends and family, like saw the transformation in me, and so most of them were very like intrigued by it and interested, mm -hmm. and like just happy for me. So I was lucky in that way to have that support. So yeah. The name of the program? The so the brain retraining program I did was called DNRS. So it's called the Dynamic Neural Retraining System. But there's there's plenty of other programs out there. There's also the Gupta program or Primal Trust if it is a really good one as well. So, yeah. Did that program involve any equipment or? Just no, it's equipment? just it's mostly like a course. Like okay. it kind of gives you the tools to make the changes that you need to to help regulate your nervous system. Is there an aspect of it that's? meditative or is it just visualization it's mostly visualization and then they also kind of like have you make these mindset shifts where you you shift your focus away from illness and you redirect any sort of negative thought patterns and you're doing as much as you can to like elevate your state of emotion to uh, like help your body feel safe and, and be able to get into that healing state so that's something that I feel like we can both relate to a lot. I did a lot of like scriptural affirmations mm -hmm. and they felt so repetitive and like I was just basically speaking God's truth over my life and it really challenged my faith and it retrained my belief system, my negative thinking patterns. Like I need to focus on what God says and not what my circumstances say. Yeah. And it seems like that's exactly what you were doing with this. Yeah. And that was huge for me. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. it's definitely huge because I think, you know, you, you can't eat your way into health necessarily, right. you know, like you, you have to believe that you can heal. And that was another thing that was huge for me was just like, I, I was told for so long that I would be sick for the rest of my life, that I had these genetic incurable diseases. And I didn't want to believe that, but because I had been told it for so long, it kind of, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to make the best out of this. I'm going to try to get as, as healthy as I can, but I guess I'm still stuck with this for life. But then I had this mindset shift of like, no, I can actually heal. Like I can get better. I I don't care what any of these diagnoses you gave me. I'm, I'm not so diagnoses. Diagnoses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't care what any of these labels that you gave for what I had. I just know that I can get better. And I know like I 
fully believe that I can heal. And that was, that was a turning point for me in my healing journey was like just believing that I was going to recover. This is so powerful. Um, and I know you might not be able to quantify, but the surgeries that you had, my daughter has had Chiari surgery. Oh, wow. And, you know, and, and I know it is the weapon cure all at the time. That's what you thought right. would be the best to do. Looking back, would you have done the surgeries that you had? No, I wouldn't have had a single surgery that I had. And, um, yeah, it's a hard thing, too, because my, my neck is actually fused from C0 to C2. So I can't, like, this is as far as I can look. Um, and so that still affects me. And if that, that's if I could go back and change one thing, it would be to not have that surgery. Um, and so it's hard sometimes because people will, like, comment on my post saying, well, you had that surgery. That's why you're better. And I'm like, I was the sickest mm. I was a year after that surgery. Right. And so it's like, it, it wasn't what healed me. It wasn't what got me better. And it's really cool because I've actually had some people reach out to me with similar conditions saying, like, I was able to avoid surgery mm. because I did, you know, animal-based diet or nervous system regulation or brain retraining. All, all these different things and I was able to heal. And what's interesting about it is like, you know, I was in all those Facebook support groups for the conditions I had and like, I probably encountered thousands of people that have had the surgery that I have had. And I don't know a single person that got their life back from that surgery. Maybe they had like some improvements or whatever, but they still were seriously sick after it. And so, like the only people that I really see healing are people that are, you know, making these lifestyle changes and kind of taking hold of their recovery. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. How did you find Rebecca? Uh, YouTube, I think. <laughs> Was it? Um, Maybe through Dr. Barry? It might have been, yeah. Um, or did, did you do a series with Michaela Peterson? I, I think it might have been that yeah. one that I was first introduced to your story. Oh, yeah. And you went, wow. Yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> but when I saw her, I was like, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, if this girl can do it, then oh. I can do it. And so she was a huge source of inspiration for me. Um, and yeah, like I said, just like finding someone that had, you know, obviously like our stories are very different, but so a lot of similarities too. And Finding someone that was able to like gain weight back and um, yeah, just re just recover like she did was was really inspiring for me. You mentioned that you didn't have to deal with the social aspect because you didn't have that going yeah. on. Yeah. And but you had to later. So yeah. as a young adult, you probably have a lot. Can you share anything about that? Yeah. Um. You know, I honestly I still haven't had too much of an issue with it. Sometimes I feel a bit uncomfortable, like if somebody invites us over to dinner and I'm like, I ate before, you know, or like something because like that. Because they're serving lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's what I always say is the difficulty. Is yeah, and I don't want to make people. A dinner party, you think, well, I could always just eat whatever meat out of something and you yeah. get there and it's lasagna and garlic yeah. bread and Caesar salad and it's like, who? Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard because I think I don't want to make other people uncomfortable and that's like the main thing for me is you know I don't want to offend someone else but usually when I tell them you know why I'm doing what I'm doing or if they know anything about what I've been through then they're very like accepting and understanding of it um, yeah, like we went to a dinner at church and they were all asking us about this this all meat diet and <laughs> stuff so it's it's it can be a fun way to be able to share yeah. some things mm -hmm. um I'm which is assuming it, he's fully on board he he <laughs> isn't actually he's he's <laughs> <laughs> i've called you out <laughs> yeah, he's not carnivore but he wears the hoagies <laughs> no hoagies here he's very <laughs> pro uh no seed oils it's like he always checks all his yeah. food for seed oils and he eats a ton of meat so and he does well with that so i, I always yeah. wonder i saw a lot of people post Websites saying that they receive such a hard time from their families and friends, and I don't, I don't have any. You know, no one ever says anything to me, but I think it's because I'm skinny. It is. They're like, yeah. you need to eat meat. <laughs> you eat fat. Yeah, yeah. They don't, they don't yeah. think I'm risking anything because mm -hmm. I'm skinny. Yeah. yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. I can't even realize that all the time. Yeah. 
Yeah, I always forget like how small meat portions are in like the normal oh, world. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I need like eight of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you ever struggle with any mood disorders? I didn't, thankfully. Yeah, that wasn't too big of a struggle for me. Actually, um, I would say my mental health was was pretty good considering things. Um, I did develop a bit of anxiety after like going through trauma in the hospital and stuff like that, um, but not too bad. And that's one of the reasons why I was like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty chill. Like, I don't know if this brain retraining thing will do anything for me, but I was wrong, wrong, wrong about that. It's that's awesome. still really needed for me. Um, so, yeah. Is that something you still do to this day on a daily basis, weekly, or just it's not so? At this point, I'd say like the first like six or eight months of doing it, I was really strict about doing like that hour of visualization. So now I kind of do it as needed. I, I'd say I do maybe. 15 to 30 minutes a day. Um, it's also been really helpful to do like somatic practices. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those. Are you familiar with those at all? It's basically like um, ways to, yeah, yeah. It's, it's basically like a, a method of healing trauma. And so even just things like um, there's, there's a practice where you like put your arm oh, right. here like this and just That's like so holding cool. certain postures that kind of like help signal safety. Yeah, I saw you do that in music. Yeah, <laughs> I do this a lot. Like just, it, it helps, it, it's calming. That's really um, cool. Yeah, just things like that where, um, I know there's something like where you do like eye scanning and you kind of just um, scan your eyes. Yeah, yeah, and try to like look at textures of things right. and just like bring your brain into the present. Is there a program for that or is it a part of what you there may be, but I kind of just have picked up on it through like following different people on Instagram and like looking at YouTube videos yeah. and stuff. So I haven't done any sort of formal training for that or just Google. Yeah, I know that Irene Williams. Do you know her? Who? Irene Williams. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what she did. Yeah. 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 She did that too. Okay. Yeah. Just like little simple exercises like that have have been helpful for me too. So did you discover the brain retraining of your own, or did somebody bring it to you? <laughs> That's funny that you asked that. Um, so I actually heard about that program that I did four years before, or maybe in five, before I started it. And it just sounded crazy to me. I was like, that, that sounds like a hoax, you know? Whoa, like, whoa, whoa. I have a real illness, okay? <laughs> but uh, then I, I just feel like it isn't pre presented very well sometimes like it can be kind of cheesy and um, the science behind it is amazing though it's like it's so intriguing to me but I I don't know it's, it's hard like whenever I recommend it to people I'm like but let me give you this like really long caveat and warn you of like it might be a little cheesy but mm -hmm. it works it's like I mean it changed my life so it's um, it's been huge for me but I think it's also, people get caught up in it, like, oh, this program healed me. I'm like, no, you healed you. Like, it's just giving you tools. Mm -hmm. It's not like the program is like you have to stick to it perfectly for it to work. It's just like giving you tools and ideas to change, you know, your mindset and like visualize um, healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? <laughs> well, I, I just have a comment. Uh, you two young girls, if I, I just really give, I just applaud your uh, your courage and your your determination to take your you know matters into your own hands and health, and that you did research. And I'm just so I'm just so like in awe that you found the answers. And I'm lucky I did after all this time. But uh, with the, when you were talking about uh, the flight and, uh, fight and flight response with your adrenal glands, I, I mean, how are your adrenal glands today? I had that, and then when about 10 years ago, I had a stage four adrenal fatigue, and then uh, I had to take cause. I was, I actually was on steroids for a while, too. Oh, I had steroids. adrenal insufficiency. Okay. And uh, I am completely off the medication now, but okay. I was steroid dependent for 
a year and a half or two years and I was able to come off of it. That was like one of the hardest things I've ever done mm -hmm. was to come off of steroids. Mm -hmm. It was wild. So you, wouldn't, you wouldn't recommend that to you? To you? Oh, no, no, no. 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 <laughs> so the steroids helped you when you were in the fight or flight? Mm -hmm. I mean, you think it helped you. Well, what so what started. really happened was they put me on like a bunch of steroids from the, the hot, after the surgery and after that I like I, I was like in bed and I like couldn't move I felt like I was like passing out while laying down like I, I just like couldn't think I couldn't like it was the craziest thing like I felt like I was just like slipping away I felt like I was dying and um, then they realized that like even just giving me like these high doses of steroids in the hospital was what I think triggered me to like need them or something and so um, then they started giving me the steroids after that and um, yeah anyway I was eventually able to, to come off of them thankfully and I, I never will go near a steroid again in my entire life because of that but um, yeah so I don't think that's a that's a good that wasn't part of my healing at all yeah sweetie did you go through any kind of a detox program or anything after all those chemicals um I no, I did. You I did just it. go to the whole the meat, the whole foods. Yeah, like actually, before I did carnivore, I did about a year and a half of chronic Lyme treatment. Did you ever do Lyme treatment? I did. I did ozone therapy. Okay. But I walked away because I was like, this is like a lifetime thing. Yeah. Like this is not yeah. sustainable. Yeah. So I actually, I did like a year and a half of, of uh, Lyme treatment. It was kind of a mix of like antibiotics and uh, naturopathic Lyme. Did you do like IV treatments and stuff? And stuff? Um, not a lot, okay. but just yeah, this. just oral stuff, but it kind of got me from like maybe 1% to 2%. Right. It helped a little, little tiny bit, but I was like, if this is how much progress I make in a year and a half in this, like I need something different. And yeah. so I, I wouldn't, that's another thing that I wouldn't have done if <laughs> I were to go back, but you know, it's was, it was part of my story for a reason, I think. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I get the same kind of kickback from people. They're like, oh, well, you got ozone therapy. That's why you're better. I'm like, that's not my story. That's yeah. I was not yeah. better. <laughs> I got worse. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you find that you include anything else other than fully animal? For quite a while, I didn't. Um, so I was strict carnivore for a year and a half. And these last few months, I've added in a little bit of fruits. Um, a little bit of just I don't know, like plants, I guess you could say <laughs> here and there. Like I try to make sure it's like properly prepared to like lower oxalates and whatnot. But um, and is it just for the desire for variety or no? It's actually not, which which is interesting. Like I just kind of got to a point where I was like, I don't feel right eating only meat anymore, which is weird. But like. I just felt like I needed to try adding a little bit of other, you know, as high quality as I could find source foods. Um, and I, I felt like that was the right route to go. It's really interesting because I kind of preferred to be carnivore. Like, it's so easy. You literally just like cook meat and that's just so easy. You know, you can keep it in your freezer and you don't have to worry about fresh food and stuff. Um, but yeah, it just, it kind of felt like the right way for me to go was to be more of like animal based and more. yeah I think like for me it's really interesting I, I have a question for you wait um, a minute I'm not done with you yet oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on that line of okay. thought though yeah. is so are have you at all in this progressive mm -hmm. journey of yours toward this point where you're at yeah. now um, been concerned about or tried getting your ketones higher for any particular reason um, I haven't, you know, I haven't been much big on like tracking things and I think everybody's different in that regard. Like for me, if I get like hyper focused on something, it's just like not healthy for me. And so I just am kind of trying to be a little bit more intuitive with things and just like trust, okay, like I'm nourishing my body well. I'm yeah. eating, I'm focusing on animal based foods. That's the majority of what I eat and it's helped me so much and so that's kind of what I try to focus on like you know I'm, I'm just gonna trust that I can heal the way that I'm going um, and that that seems to have worked well for me but um, let's not say that you know tracking certain metrics can't be helpful for others. And would you say 
and just out of my curiosity to understand kind of where yeah. you're at, do you eat fruit every day? Um, not a lot of fruit. I'd say probably, you know, three or four or five days a week. I because, eat some. And then my, my thought goes mm -hmm. back to listening to your story. It doesn't seem like you ever had a sugar addiction, binge eating disorder because you said, well, I feel comfortable now. I feel like yeah. I'm eating intuitively. And I intuitively, after eating a piece of pineapple, want to mm -hmm. eat the whole pineapple. Oh, that's my intuition. Okay, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's probably, yeah, it's something I don't, I don't struggle with. And what was interesting is the first, um, the first thing I had a bite of, uh, a strawberry, that was the first thing that I had that was a carnivore after like a year and a half. And I feel like most people that do carnivore are like, well, I sometimes try a little bit of this and that, but I was like so intense about it. I was like, I'm not even gonna have a, a nibble. nibble of anything I else. Anything. Yeah, and I was like, I'm gonna cook everything to know exactly what's in it. And so I think I got a little too hyper-focused on that. But um, I took, I ate a strawberry and I was like, hmm, wow, that was really sweet. That was good. And like, I just yeah. did, I felt like I didn't need anything else. I didn't need any more. I could not ever think about a strawberry again after that. Like, it, it, I, I, that hasn't been a struggle for me. Um, specifically, like, I feel like I can always stop when it comes to anything that's sweet. What um, vegetables do you eat? I don't really eat vegetables. It's like the one thing that... Yeah, um, I, I, yeah, I do have a little bit of avocado, um, and I, I have had like, I, I, I'm at a keto retreat, but um, <laughs> I, <guess. laughs> yeah. I, I have had like some, um, like boiled organic potatoes, and I've made like homemade organic uh, masa tortillas, oh, that really good. Um, and so having little bits of that, but it's like. I always make sure to prioritize like my animal protein and fat and then have, if I'm gonna have carbs, like have a little bit, but I'd say like the most I eat is like 30 to, I mean, the most I've probably eaten is like 80 grams, which that doesn't happen often, but. She posts her plates on Instagram and I always appreciate like, I see your little clementine or something and then mm -hmm. she's got all these animal foods. And so it's very obvious that you're that's prioritizing the, the, the fat and the protein and it's yeah. It's like, yeah, that's not gonna spike the blood sugar. Like, yeah. So here's my question for you. Okay. Um, so I tested to be very, very low in vitamin C, like extremely low. And um, I did some research on it and found that vitamin C is necessary for the breakdown of histamines and it's also important for immune function and it's important for the synthesis of collagen. So as someone that was recovering from a connective tissue disorder, you think that would be pretty important. Um, and also I obviously have